So I have a system here of atoms, mix, a mixture of species A and species B, and they're, they're placed in this box, and there is this, um, there is no wall here, but for just for a visual reference, um, I've drawn a kind of surface uh, between the left and the right hand sides of the box. Now, um, we, we can see from, from visual inspe inspection that the density of species A on the left is greater than the density of species A on the right. So th this is the, this, the, the, the state of the system at some time. We're going to say time t equals zero. Now if we wait a very long time, let's just say t equals infinity for argument's sake, then we can expect that the density of species A on the left will become more or less the same as, as the density of species A on the right. Now the reason behind that can be described um, thermodynamically in terms of entropy um, as a very qualitative brief explanation, you can imagine that we have a very ordered system here because we have more atoms of species A on the left than on the right. And the system over time will always try to increase its entropy, that is to say that it will try to become more disordered. And so if we wait a long enough time, the, the system will, will ma maximize its entropy and we will have a, a greater mixture, a more disorder of species um, A and B in the box, and so then there will be roughly the same number or the same density um, in, of species A on the left and on the right. And of course, each atom of species A has the same mass, and so we can say that the number of atoms of species A on the left and the right will be roughly the same. Now in order for this to occur, species A is going to have to move, some of the atoms of species A are going to have to traverse this, this surface here from left to right. And this, this movement of the atoms is happening under um, something that, that we can term diffusion. So I will write this um, in blue because this is important. This is diffusion. So there is no, there's no external driving force or anything. This is purely due to the thermal motion of the atoms. And let's underline it because it is very important. So we want to know, at time t equals zero, um, what is, is the flux? You know, at, what, at what rate are the species A moving from the left to the right? So let's denote the flux through this surface here, this blue surface, as, as uh, j. So we'll do j a, um, and this will give this units of um, kilograms per uh, square meter because it's you know passing through this area and we want to know the rate so it's per second as well so what is the flux passing through here well we know that it's proportional to the the negative difference in the density of species a across these two sides and I'm going to write this in terms of a gradient um, we have a very binary description here but um, what is uh, more general is, is a um, description in terms of gradient. So there's this difference in the density of species A along this axis. Let's call this axis axis Z here, so this Z direction. So it's the, the gradient of the density difference, the, the gradient of the density in the direction of species Z. So if there is no difference, if, if so like at t equals uh, infinity in our example here, where the, the density of species A on the left and the right is the same, well then this is going to be zero, so then there's going to be no flux. And what you have to remember, of course, is that this is the net flux of species A. So we could have an atom uh, of species A passing through in this direction, but just as equally likely would be a movement of species A um, an atom of species A in this direction. So that the net flux over a reasonably, um, a reasonably long time would, would be on average zero if, if there is no difference in density. Now we can write this, um, this is in terms of density, but we can also do this in terms of mass fraction. 
we know that the mass fraction of species A is given by the, this ratio, right? This, this ratio of the density of species A over the system density. Um, and so let's rewrite this, spe the, the density of species A in terms of mass fraction of species A here. So again, if we write this, um, the, uh, the flux of species A across this surface, this is then proportional to um, just substituting this in here. This is um, WA um, times the density over so over this the, the, so this gradient of this uh, along the z-axis, um, and then we can actually take because the, this is the same, right? The density is independent of position, so. This is then the negative density times the mass fraction here, um, the gradient of this mass fraction on, along the z-axis. And then we can get rid of this proportionality by substituting in some sort of proportionality constant. So this flux is then equal to um, this proportionality constant, d, which depends on both species a and b. Um, multiplied by the density, multiplied by the gradient of the um, mass fraction. And to, to write this more, so th this is actually, this should actually be like, it's in the z direction, right? The flux of A in the z direction. But to more generally speaking, um, in general, the mass, the, um, the, the flux of species A um, in, in any, any direction is the, this proportionality constant multiplied by the density multiplied by the gradient of the mass fraction in any direction. Now, this proportionality constant is uh, the diffusion coefficient. So, I shall just highlight this here. So, this is the diffusion coefficient. And this depends on the, the characteristics of uh, species A and species B. Now, let's just take a look at the units, right? So we know already that this is kilograms per square meter second. Um, and then we have here kilograms per cubic meter. Actually, let's write this. Let's just write this down here. Sorry about that. So this is kilograms per cubic meter. And this is, well, it's, it's the gradient of mass fraction. So this is um, per meter, right? So what we, we can deduce, deduce from simple um, unit analysis here is that this diffusion coefficient then must have units of square meters per second. And this is commonly commonly referred to this uh, equation here. Actually, let's write it in, uh, just put it in a different color. So this equation here is more commonly, commonly known as a uh, fixed law or fixed law of diffusion or sometimes fixed first law, depending on, on what book you're reading. Let's call this fixed law of diffusion. And, and this is a, a fundamental equation for, for um, a lot of systems. Now I've described this in terms of um, the flux in terms of kilograms per square meter, but I just want to mention that um, we can also describe this um, in terms of uh, kilomoles per square meter. So if I make this capital J, um, this is equal to these uh, units, then are kilomoles, kilomoles per square meter per second. And then this is then equal to this diffusion coefficient again. So this doesn't change. 
but then we're describing this in terms of um, the, the molar density and the molar um, the, the molar gradient in terms of position. So as a reminder, this is then uh, kilomoles per, uh, per cubic meter. And then the units of the diffusion coefficient, and um, although it's measuring something different, the, 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 the uh, molar fraction gradient, the, the, the units, the final units, don't change. But of course, this is measuring something slightly different to this here, right? 